structure, or who is behind the company? Explain a little bit about. Okay, uh, the company has been established in uh, 2005. At that time, we have uh, spoken to the prime minister, and we wanted to really build the infrastructure, telecom infrastructure in uh, Kurdistan. It was difficult at the time because uh, the government has a monopoly in all the sectors, not all, even telecom, maybe electricity as well. So we approached with an idea of partnering uh, uh, the telecom, the Ministry of Telecom, and to have all the infrastructure they, they have, which they did not have a fiber optic at that time. Uh, all the exchange, and the exchange were very old. Uh, so we be partners, like we had 70%, they had 30%. With uh, some of the investors, uh, which don't have uh, only major uh, minority, we have agreed to a contract for 20 years with the Kurdistan regional government uh, and uh, the Ministry of Telecom, particularly. We have signed the under the investment uh, law the, uh, legislation, which they have now here in uh, in Kurdistan, which is very very attractive. I can tell you, uh, and we started to build uh, things that the Kurdistan don't have. Uh, at the time, internet was uh, the penetration rate almost was zero. We tried to, uh, to concentrate on the internet uh, sector, not on on voice like the other uh, uh, operators tried to get license for mobile. Then we had Korak, we had Asia, and we tried first of all to build this infrastructure. At the time, it was very expensive, and uh, there was no uh, guarantee on return on investment. But we tried because we always believe in the future. We uh, laid around 3,000 kilometers of fiber, not only covering and connecting all the main cities, but all the other small cities and villages. At that time, that was 2006. By the end of 2007, we have finished. And then we've changed and we have replaced all their uh, old exchanges, which were imported from Iran and from th some other. They were not very uh, good. We couldn't offer uh, our subscribers, our customers with good uh, quality and and better service with this exchange, so we had to change them. So the first time in the region, maybe at that time, in 2007, we done fiber to the curb, not fiber to the home at that time, fiber to the curb. So we changed all their copper network they have at the time, and we replaced it with, with fiber. And then at the time, then uh, the customer knew the, the quality and the difference between the copper and the, and the fiber. And we had a very big challenge at the same time connecting with the outside world. Like uh, for a fiber, you have to be connected to the, to the net around the world. And the only place for us to connect to Europe was Turkey. And in 2007 and 8, they had uh, some political tensions with the Kurdish. We tried our best with the help of our uh, partners, uh, and we managed. And at that time, the Turkish uh, government tried to change their policies. We've managed to make this interconnection. We were the first company to interconnect Iraq all around the world and uh, replace this connection, the visa. They had very expensive with very bad qualities. So we were the only, uh, the, the first company even before the Iraqi government. And even the Iraqi government at that time, because they are still a monopoly, they tried to prevent that uh, connection. They tried even politically, they spoke to the Turkish government to stop it. But the Turkish, no, they, they really supported the, the company they have, the Turk Telecom. And we had a deal with Turk Telecom, and the connection was done. That was, I think, uh, changing point, changing uh, uh, in, the, in the history of, of the Iraqi telecom. Because until that moment, everything was a monopoly, even in Kurdistan and in Iraq. It's Iraq still, unfortunately, is like this. So based on that and that connection, there was a huge discount and huge uh, uh, yeah, a discount on the uh, bandwidth given to the companies and the subscribers. At that time, one mega was costing more than $1,400. Now we are talking, it's costing only $20. That's the help, help of Nauruz. And it, without that interconnection, it wouldn't have been done. And if you're not in Iraq, still one mega is $1,200, the most expensive one all around the world. Iraq is more expensive than Cuba. But maybe nobody knows that because they have no still the monopoly. They don't allow any companies, any private sector to go and have any deals with the neighboring countries and to connect to other, even to connect to Kurdistan. They are very strict on that. And uh, the internet penetration in Iraq is only 2%. 2% is the lowest. Even uh, Bahrain have more subscribers than whole Iraq internet. And if they, if you see like, uh, Internationally, if the penetration of Iraq is 8%, it's only because of Kurdistan.
because we have a penetration, we've just reached 10, and we are trying to reach 33, 34, uh, and in 2014, we reached 50%. Uh, this is our policy now. So uh, this is what we've done at the, at the beginning of Nauru's Telecom. But then we try to improve on the service that we have, improve on not only uh, on uh, fiber we have laid, we try to build on the fiber, and we went into wireless as well. Uh, there's so many areas in Kurdistan, geographically it's difficult to reach by fiber. We tried to even offer a, wild, uh, a wireless service. We tried, our policy uh, 2009 was to cover whole, whole Kurdistan, not only the main cities, or not the other cities, the whole Kurdistan, because we want all the people and the residents of Kurdistan to benefit from this service. As you know, internet is very, very important. Uh, now it's one of the services that nobody wants to get rid of it. Even the, the, the latest studies they did in Europe, I was in France, the least uh, service you want to get rid of it, if you, you have any economical uh, problem, is an internet. Even the young people, they could give up their cars, but they will not give up, give up their broadband. So we tried to do this, we tried to cover whole Kurdistan, and then it was 2.5G at that time. And the application and the internet and uh, the usage is, is more and more, and day after day, the demand was, was uh, more. So we always try to have more capacity to bring more technologies, better technologies, to offer our subscriber more uh, bandwidth. So we thought about 3G to concentrate on this. Uh, the government mentality, uh, you know, we all, uh, we inherited a government that it was monopoly uh, at the Saddam time. Uh, that's, on, uh, I mean, all Iraq. And Kurdistan was part of Iraq. So the government and the employees working for the government, they have one mentality, they've always uh, kept doing the same uh, things. It's so difficult when you uh, will try to bring them, to try and do uh, especially in our case, to be, a part and, uh, to be a partner with the government and to try to work with them because this is the mentality, it takes time to change it. This is one, one challenge. The other challenge is the government itself, how to deal with them and how to, to draft a contract with them. They always want, because they are government, they always want to have everything, they have all the rights, and then it's, uh, it's difficult to do uh, the drafting of the contract. But we did that, we managed that, and in Kurdistan it's better now. If you look at in 2005 until now, it's a huge change. So uh, now they are looking at the private sector as a very, very important sector to improve the economy of the country. But still in Iraq it's not the same, they are going backwards. like. Uh, even if they have some private sector, they look at it as a an, an threat to the government and uh, they try to monopolize everything again uh, to, in, into the hands of the government. So they, if, if they have uh, even uh, private, at the time of that tide of Saddam, they had some private uh, companies. Although it was, belongs, it was belonged to the government, but still they have some uh, uh, like uh, responsibility to do, so they have some decision making uh, in, in the company. Now they're trying to scrap all that, bring it back all to the government. So it's different. Kurdistan is going towards the privatization and they are going towards, uh, towards uh, bringing everything back to the government. So I don't believe uh, in Iraq we are going to have uh, uh, big companies coming to invest uh, with this, uh, the policy they have right now. But in Kurdistan now they are opened. Uh, 2005 was difficult. And 2007 to 9, it is much better right now. And we can say, uh, because I travel a lot uh, to special neighboring countries, let's say Turkey, we are not far behind Turkey right now. So the mentality has changed. Uh, the government has changed the, the way they deal with the uh, private sector. Now, now they see the private sector as a as a partner. And I think they are trying to uh, introduce a new law in the uh, the minister's cabinet which is a PPP, part, uh, private, uh, public partnership, which is very good. I think they've done it in South Africa and was very successful. So this is the, the strategy for the Kurdistan government. But for Iraq, I'm not optimistic. Okay. So what is the... What I wouldn't the blame, I wouldn't blame, I would, I would more blame the Kurdish government, not the Iraqi government, because uh, the constitution of Iraq is very clear. And they have so many rights in Kurdistan, they can use that, but maybe they've never tried to follow and ne never, never tried to enforce it. Uh, I would say in, in Telecom. In Telecom, if you look at the constitution of Iraq, it's very clear. They have a right here to issue money license, but they never went to that situation to really go and discuss it with the Iraqi government and to impose something, because this is their right. So I think it's not uh, only Iraqis uh, doing that, but they are really, they are neglecting uh, 
some things they should have done, and uh, which is to impose the right they have in the constitution of Iraq, which is they are, they are very clear. Uh, that was until uh, two years ago. You could say that it was really divided. You can think it is divided, but now, after uh, the the last term of Nasser Van Barzani, the new prime minister, he tried to change this, and I think he could already 50% of that has been been done. He gathered and he unified the Interior Ministry, which was not unified. It was the first Leimania, they have one, and they have one in Erbil and Dohuk. Now they unified the uh, finance, uh, finance Ministry. It's been unified again. And now uh, any uh, legislation or any laws that, uh, or any license issued in Erbil is respected all in whole Kurdistan. Now, it's not really 100%, but it's starting to, uh, for, to, to be recognized everywhere. So it's better right now, and I believe maybe in 2013 and 2014 that problem will finish as well. So for, it will be very good for any investor to come, and once they invest in Kurdistan, they will be investing in the whole Kurdistan. And when they have uh, a license here, uh, I would always uh, talk about uh, telecom. If they have a license here, the license will uh, be uh, covering whole Kurdistan, not only some part of Kurdistan, and not respect it somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about the, the group. It's a it's a Nuros group, and you have certain companies inside. Uh, no, we, ha we are a regional group, regional telecom group. We have shares in Nauru's Telecom and we have shares in Nauru's Tel, which we have a project ongoing in Iraq with uh, maybe you heard the news about it with some, uh, we are finding some difficulties. Also, we have uh, some other companies and the regional telecom either owned 100% by us or we are part of it. So, uh, regional telecom is a group. Nauru's is a, uh, one company, we are a shareholder in it. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, what about your strategy? Uh, you, you, you said you are going to deploy yeah, LTE. Yeah, what yeah. Are the we, we, ha we have, we have a strategy. Right? We have really a very good strategy. Not all be, uh, only that will benefit us. It was benefiting Kurdistan region and it was benefiting the whole Iraq. The strategy was, first of all, to uh, make Iraq the bridge between the, the, the Far East and Europe and America. Because if everybody knows all these cables, submarine cables, they go through uh, canals, uh, Swiss Canal in Egypt. And there is uh, a big concerns for all the big companies around the world. They want to find an alternative route. An alternative to route that we've been working, we've been working on it for two or three years with all the studies. It's uh, Iraq, because not only it's shorter, when you, in telecom, when you mean it's shorter distance, it means le less uh, latency. And a new application like a 3D TV and all the other new applications, they don't, uh, the big companies, the big operators, they don't go and, uh, after the price. They go after latency. So the latency, uh, the better latency, they will always prioritize it over a better price. So we thought Iraq is an ideal place to change, at least to compete with, with the Swiss Canal. And we tried to do, do this, and with a very good uh, help of the resigned uh, Minister of Telecom of Iraq, Mohammed Tawfiq Alawi, he was a great person. We have uh, uh, tried to explain this idea for him. He, he really helped, he tried to help, and he, he believed in the idea. And he gave license us to do this. Uh, we did this as an investment. We've paid all the amount, and uh, we've given a very good share to the Iraqi government to be a from the total revenue. And they agreed on it at that time, went all the legal channels, and we had uh, more than one year of, of discussion and negotiation, and they signed. signed. We finished 80% of this project, unfortunately, like uh, in, in Iraq, and the Prime Minister of Iraq, he has no uh, economic uh, knowledge at all. He is a security guy, and he came and we have always, you have in everywhere, you have competitors. But in Iraq, it works. If a competitor, he cannot compete with you. He will say, okay, he is part of, uh, let's say, Israel, or he's uh, trying to uh, spy on the government. Immediately, they've stopped our project. And uh, we've been uh, in this situation for the last six months. Nobody's even answering us. And uh, in Iraq, uh, the, the courts in the hands of the prime minister. So in, within one, with one phone call, he can do whatever he wants. So we really we are very, very, we think we've been uh, treated very badly with the, uh, the Iraqi government. And uh, we've been accused, some accusation really is not truth. 
Nobody heard from us. We are trying for the last six months to see him or even to send him a letter. He's not allowing even to see a company to come, coming here to invest under the investment law of Iraq and already invested more than $137 million and uh, finished 80% of the project. Now our project is just there and could uh, everything be, be damaged within the next six months and we will get out nothing. And even if we go to the court with the Iraqi government or the prime, the prime minister, he could delay us in the course for the next 10 years. So we are really f uh, facing a very difficult situation right now. That was an idea of, of changing Iraq and changing the map of the region, telecom map of the region. So it was, it was huge opportunity for us. And unfortunately, because the prime minister don't have this economic knowledge and he doesn't want to listen, we're just uh, losing it. Also economically. Map. Iraq will be, we, we, we had an idea to have a hub in Baghdad. Like you, they will be recognized like Frankfurt, London, Marseille, and New York. They, they would have been an exchange for data in Iraq. So P, uh, the companies, Saudi Arabia, Iranian, Far East, they wouldn't go all the way to, to buy IPs from London and from Frankfurt. They would have bought it from Iraq. So the, the, on the map, it was a very good uh, image for Iraq. But unfortunately, we don't even have a chance to explain to anybody this idea. And even you explain, they don't understand because they don't have any knowledge. Let's talk about other projects. Which are in yeah, the other project, and now we are trying, to, because what the setback that happens to us to in, in Baghdad, we try to hold all our projects going towards Iraq right now. So we are concentrating on Kurdistan. 4G, I believe, it will change a lot in, in Kurdistan. Uh, we are trying to do the same, to uh, deploy a 4G LTE, uh, in, in whole Kurdistan, not only the main cities, to cover the whole uh, blanket coverage for whole Kurdistan. This uh, technology, maybe you are aware of it, it's, only, it's been deployed in some European countries, in, in Germany's rural areas, in USA, but USA with different uh, frequencies than us. Maybe USA, it was the first commercial uh, launch they have uh, in the world. We are not only we are one year or one and a half year behind USA, and we are online with the uh, Emirat, UAE, and Saudi Arabia. But if you compare the network that we have, and according to the vendor, which is Alcatel Lucent, it's much more advanced than that was uh, uh, is deployed in Saudi Arabia and UAE. So we have some good idea. We we've uh, really uh, through through our experience in this sector because we never started as a 2G and a mobile. We started as a data company. So we gathered all this experience and now we are trying to implement it and to deploy this service to the benefit of all our subscribers and maybe to make Kurdistan in the near future like uh, uh, when it comes to telecom, they will have a better infrastructure than they have in uh, UAE and Kuwait and uh, Saudi Arabia, which is very rare. No one would, no one would have believed that uh, five years ago, but it's reality now. In 2013, we will have the best service in the region, mm -hmm. which is a 4G. 4G will, uh, will allow so many, uh, they have so many benefits. First of all, it will have uh, uh, before, you know, uh, with a big capacity, with a big, uh, uh, for the broadband internet, you always needed a wired. We already have a wired. But now you want a bro wireless broadband, and this is a wireless broadband. You can download movies, uh, you can, uh, uh, the media companies can uh, benefit from it, like uh, uh, they can uh, broadcast uh, without uh, using a, any other expensive tools, they will just uh, try with one chip or one SIM card on the on the camera. They can broadcast live wherever they are under the coverage. The government can benefit the monitoring cameras, everything, uh, the police. So it will really change a lot in the in the Kurdistan region. Built it in this cash flow, and we have uh, investors as well with us. Uh, but uh, if you look at the business itself, I mean, uh, yes, we've we've spent 137 million, but the size of the business was too huge. And even now, if, we, if they allow us and we continue and we work, this company immediately, once we, we do the interconnection, it will work one billion. Because all this uh, concentration we get from all, all the big players in telecom and all around the world, they are all looking, not only us, they are even looking for this route to, to connect uh, Far East to, to Europe. It's not for us, it's for all around the world. This is a benefit to all, all of them. Uh, Swiss Canal, they are, uh, even the change, uh, after the change of, uh, of the president in Egypt, it really affected 
and now the new government, they will have new rules, and they don't have a redundancy because all the cables go in the same place. So there is a cut, there is cut, cut everywhere. And this is this bridge between uh, Far East and, and Europe. And if you, uh, if you are aware that 80% of the contents come from Europe and USA. So there is always a huge demand for this interconnection. So it's not, well, not, not only our project, it's their project. So this uh, project, it was, if, if you go to compensation now, it's with 15 years contract and uh, uh, with a business plan, uh, plan that we have, it's worth more than 3 billion. So it was really worth uh, to spend 137 and, and to complete the project, we, we needed to spend more than 200 million dollars. Um, now lastly, perhaps some facts and figures about telecom sector, internet sector. Um, yeah. What is the potential for growth in Kurdistan? Potential growth in greater is... Greater Iraq, uh, percentages yeah. what we're talking yeah. about, subscribers. Yeah, if you look at, at Iraq, if you look globally, you will see it's, uh, they have 8% uh, penetration rate. Uh, but uh, Iraq, uh, Kurdistan, you can say uh, 7% or uh, Iraq 1% because the penetration rate on the internet is very low because they don't allow uh, any companies to work. No private sector is allowed to, to build an infrastructure for internet in Iraq. The government trying to do and the government, unfortunately, you know, there is a, they cannot do it. And it's been like this for the last eight to ten years, and that could continue. I, I would believe another five years. It's so difficult. Uh, in Kurdistan, I believe we could reach uh, at least by the end of 2013 to 35 percent penetration rate, and by the end of uh, 2015, we could reach over 50 percent penetration rate, which is very good, I think. Uh, we started when I think we started was zero when we start 2005, zero penetration rate, and now we are going to the same company. I'm talking about our own subscriber, with, uh, because we have more than 85 percent. The Internet of Kurdistan comes through us. So uh, for, a, uh, for a region or say a country like Kurdistan, 50 percent in 2000, by the end of 2014 is very healthy. But in Iraq, I cannot predict anything. It could stay just like this forever. In terms of the growth of the, of the revenues of the sector, what are the percentages? Okay, if you look at it, if, you, if this was compared like uh, two, three years ago, like uh, an ISP or data company uh, versus a uh, 2G uh, mobile company, always they had uh, the upper hand. They always have uh, more uh, revenue coming because everybody using the voice application always the most popular. But now this is changing. The new application on the internet changed everything. It's like uh, Voxer, Viber, WhatsApp, everything. Now, what's up is really affecting uh, the companies, uh, uh, the, the voice companies, losing revenue on messages because nobody uses messages. Once, if they have, this is very important, a good internet connection. And now, if they have a good internet connection, they could lose 50%, I believe, on the voice as well because people will uh, use Skype and Viber. And every day there is a new application, make it easier. So I believe the future, in the, in two, this is my idea, by the end of 2014, there will be no voice. So any company who has a 2G license, either they have to upgrade to 3G or 4G, or they will just die. Well, this will completely change the, the landscape, and you exactly. will get into direct competition with exactly. Exactly. We already, and this is, uh, I'm trying to explain this. This is one main of the reason that we are having all these difficulties now. When that, what happened to our company in Sleimania, because some people know, they, they know that you are way ahead of them. Ahead of them is uh, uh, not, uh, as a, a money cannot solve sometimes. Time is very important. When you are ahead of somebody two to three years, it's so difficult. So there is so many means to try and just at least either stop you or halt you. So this is happening to us, and we just get used to it. So we just uh, deal with it day by day. But uh, I think up to now we are going very well. We are. Uh, the schedule is 21st of March to come with the first 4G, to, uh, like. Uh, in the region, I would say, because what we do is different. It's not only in the name of 4G, but the service we are trying to provide has never been provided in the whole region, no, not, neither in the Gulf, not even in Turkey, not all the neighborings. I'm not sure about USA, but uh, maybe USA the same, but we could compare as a service on 4G the same as United States.